Okay. All right. This is uh, Dr. Martin recording the uh, um, the logic design video for um, Monday, uh, May the 4th. Last week of classes, and we will also do the final exam this week. So at the end of this week, you'll be done, um, which is kind of exciting. Uh, I won't be done because I'll have a lot of work to do on grades. But, um, but uh, it will be the end of classes, and hopefully things will get better. Um, Okay, so um, I'm still deciding about the format of the test. I'll talk to you about that maybe at the end of the video. Uh, I will also discuss that in the help session too briefly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But um, anyway, um, so we'll, we'll have a problem like this. This is certainly one of the problems I will want you to do. And so the way this works, um, you have this non-sequential uh, count here. Uh, and... Uh, I can't remember, I may have done this problem before, so I'm going to go through this really fairly quickly. All right, so so you start with 7, 3, 1, 0, 5. Yeah, I have done this one before. Um, so anyway, notice in the our present state, uh, really for present state, the only present states we really need would be 7, 3, 1, 0, and 4. I'm sorry, 5. 1, th one 3, 7, 3, 1, 0, and 5. And then, of course, back to 7. But we do have some don't care states, so we, so we should put those in, at least three of them. And then in addition to that, in order to easily extract it from our, from our state table into the k-maps, uh, we really do need to put it in binary order. So, so, so we'll start with state 0, even though that's just because of the binary order. And from state 0, we go to 1. So here's the zeros. I'm sorry, 5. From 0, we go to 5. So here's 0, and there's state 5 is the desired next state. From state 1, it's 0, so 0, 0, 0. From state 2, it's don't cares. From 3, it is 1. From uh, 4, it's don't cares. From 5, it is back to 7. From uh, 6, it's don't cares. And from 7, it is back to 3. And once you fill in all this, then you can extract that. You can extract this column into the three variable map for, uh, for the A input, the D sub A input. Again, we're going to have three flip-flops, A, B, and C, and we're going to have, this is going to be for the DA input, for the DB, and for the DC. And we'll put A on top and BC down the side for all three of these K-maps. Um, all right, so, so I'm not going to work it the rest of the way. Does this circuit have a clock? Yes, indeed it does. It is a sequential circuit. It has a clock. Notice this state table is really a transition table because we've already done the encoding. Um, notice there is no input and there really is no output per se. Uh, we, c we would probably just monitor the, the output variables of the flip-flop. So I guess you could say, well, the three outputs, Z1, Z2, and Z3, Z1 just equals A, Z2 equals B, and Z3 equals C, or whatever. And anyway, uh, so that's what it would look like. All right, let me, uh, let me, I want to switch to a different one. And... Um, So let's see. Uh, I think I've done most of the others on this. The only one I didn't do, uh, the only one I didn't do is this one. And um, so let's let's do this one. Really, we'll just go through this one pretty quickly. All right. A sequential, and this, by the way, this this uh, this uh, 2017 fall 2017 exam I did put on Blackboard. A sequential circuit has an input X and an output Z. The output is opposite of what the two input of what the input was two clock cycles earlier. I think I did this one too. So I'm not. I'm not. I, um, yeah, I don't think I, I'm not going to spend time doing it because I already did that one before. All right. So let's let's do this. Um, so this is um, fall of 18. Uh, so let me do a, let me do a couple things here. All right. So. Here we have uh, here we have the um, here we have the VHDL code for a flip flop and I can't remember okay so yeah so this is a little different than the one we did before let me just go through this very quickly so first off what kind of a flip flop is this well so you can look through the code so first here's the entity list which tells you the the port these are the signals available to the outside world well obviously those signals oh let's see. You can't see this. My bad. Um, 
Okay, we'll scoot this up and we'll move me, shrink me down and move me over just a little bit, maybe somewhere in here or not. All right, so for right now, we'll just look at the whole thing. All right, so look at the code. So, so first off, here's the entity declaration. Here's the port. We have D clock clear not set not inputs outputs Q and Q prime. So, so this is a flip flop. That's the entity flip flop. Here's the architecture of the flip flop, and uh, and then we begin that here, and we have this process block and the sensitivity list. So remember, this list right here is the sensitivity is the sensitivity list. Okay, and it has three signals in it: clock, set not, and clear not. Then we have the architect. We have basically the guts of the architecture here, the, we, which is an if statement with two else ifs: if, else if, else if, and if, and process. And outside the process block, we have two uh, assignment statements. One is Q equals temp, and the other Q prime equals not temp. And then some. And right here, we define sing, signal temp within the architecture because signal temp does not appear to the outside world. So it's only inside the architecture. And uh, so here's the way this works. We first test our clear not. If it's zero, which means it's active, then we set temp equal to zero. And then we would drop through and that would be the end of the, the process block. Meanwhile, this combinational assignment here is always executed whenever the right hand changes. So as soon as we change to temp in the process block, this signal outside of the process block would execute. Temp would be assigned to Q, not temp would be assigned to Q prime. And that way Q would Q would be whatever temp is and Q prime would be the opposite. Okay, then, uh, then if this is not true, which means that the clear not signal is high, then the else if would be, uh, then it would be tested. If set not equals zero, which means it's active, then we would set temp to one. So that when, so here we clear the flip flop, here we set the flip flop. And of course, this would cause Q and Q prime, which are our output signals in our port list up here in the entity, they would be set to the proper values. Finally, if both our clear not is high and our set not is high, which means they're both inactive or deasserted, then we would check this final else if, if clock tick event, which means we just had a clock change and clock is zero, so that's a falling edge clock, then D is assigned to temp. So whatever D is, temp would be that, and Q and Q prime would be D and D prime, respectively. Okay, so that's the code. All right, let's look at the questions. What kind of flip-flop does the VHDL code show? It shows a D. That's obvious because it has a D here and there's just one signal involved. How many different states can this flip-flop remember by itself? Two, a zero and a one. Will this process block be executed on a change in D? Well, you don't see D appear in the, pro in the sensitivity list. Therefore, no, the process block will not execute on a change in D. D only has an effect on the clock edge. Is the clock rising or falling? Because it's clock tick event, which again, remember that's just a, kind of an idiomatic expression that means the clock just changed, and clock equals zero. Well, that's a falling clock. If the, if the clock just changed and now it's zero, it went from one to zero just now, which meant this is the falling edge. Label the three blanks, all right? So both set not and clear not and clock are all falling, are all negative, so we have bubbles on set, we have bubbles on clear knot, we have bubbles on set knot, clear knot, and the clock. If clear knot equals zero and set knot equals zero, then what does Q equal? Well, okay, so you're saying, well, gosh, how do I know? Because they're both asserted, so will, is it zero or one? Well, it's easy. The zero is tested first, and this is never tested if the first one is true, and this is never tested if the first one is true. That's one of the skip functions of the if statement. All right, so anyway, um, so we only test the first assertion. We don't spend any time on the second, on the first test. We spend no time on the other test if the first test is true because these are else ifs. All right, and so the answer is 
Q will be zero. The signal temp is not in the port list. That's true. It is not in the port list. This is the port list up here in the entity. It's even labeled port. Uh, and you do not see temp up here because temp is a local signal confined strictly to the architecture. All right. Um, so the other thing I want to do is this one right here. This is an SM chart problem. And let's just go through this. It's very, it's pretty straightforward. It should be uh, uh, pretty straightforward to do. So for the SM chart, answer questions and write in the D flip flop equations for DA and A, uh, for DA, this should be DB and DB. Um, okay, so notes, S0 is coded A is zero and B is zero. S1 is A is 0 and B is 1, but S2 is coded 1, 1. So just so you know. And notice we wrote it out here. We usually do try and write it uh, on the top of the box or next to it. All right. How many state blocks are there? Well, there's, there, there, there's 1, 2, 3. Remember state, state blocks? Uh, well, this is the state box. Every block has, it, has to have a state box. Since there are one, two, three state boxes, there have to be three state blocks. And this one includes a decision box. This one includes a decision box. And this one includes two outputs, uh, conditional outputs, plus a decision box. Each of these state boxes also included a, an output associated with it, Z, A, Z, B, Z, Z. I think we sort of looked at this in a different format. How many state blocks are there? There are three. How many, uh, is this Amelia or more or both? Well, it's both because we have more outputs associated with each of the state blocks and we have two mealies associated here. So it's both. How many inputs does this circuit have? X, 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 it only has one input, X, one. DA, it's easy to write it. We just have to look at all the places where the first variable is a one. That would be this. And we have to account for all the paths into it. Well, there are two paths in. One comes from, uh, this block itself, and the other comes from state S1. So the one from state S1 is going to be A prime B X, A prime B X, plus the one from here, which is A B X. So that's D A, and obviously uh, the B, the A, the A's would drop, so that would just be B X. Now we already know for D B. We have, to, we have to include this, so that's going to be bx plus the path into here. There's only one path into here. It comes from uh, state S0 when x is 1. So that is a prime b prime x. And because we have a bx here and a b prime x there, the b prime drops, and you just wind up with bx plus a prime x. All right. If you didn't see this, it wouldn't be any big deal. You don't have to see that, but but that would be a theorem uh, eleven. Okay. So I did want to run through that. Let's see. We probably have one here that would be good. Let's let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, Let's do this one. We've looked at one very similar to this. Uh, well, no, let's do a different one. We have looked at one very similar to that, but uh, maybe I'll do a different one. Um, okay, let's do this one. This is this is a pretty big good one. Okay, a more sequential circuit has one input x and one output z. Z equals 1 if and only if the most recent input was a 1. And it was preceded by exactly two zeros. So basically, 0, 0, 1. Then the output's going to be a 1. All right, so, so if you look at the example down here, 0, 0, 1, the output's a 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is not, is not a 1 because it had a bunch more zeros than 2. Then 0, 0, 1, ah, that is correct. But this one, nothing, this one, nothing. 0, 0, 1, there's another one. And then finally, this one is not a 1 because there was a lot of zeros. And this is not a 1, there was only one zero. Okay, so now that you kind of see the sequence, uh, 
then that's good. Okay, so now we want to we want to complete this. So here are the questions. Complete the state graph. It can be done with the five nodes given. Remember, two paths out of each node. Okay, so remember, you've got one input, so you have to have two paths out of each node. And the other thing is, um, is this a melee or a more? Well, note we have outputs associated with the nodes, so clearly it's a more. Um, now, we start in S0, and we, we have we have we know nothing about previous inputs so if we get a one we still have nothing if we get a zero now we have the first zero and uh, so that's good so so a one we stay here a zero we go to s1 in s1 if we get a one now we're back to nothing so we would just go back here and we would still output uh, obviously we're going to output whatever's in the nodes so this, we go back here on a one. Now, if we get another zero, we're gonna to go to S2, where we have, where we basically have two zeros. All right, if we get a one, then we're gonna go back to S0, because we ain't got nothing. Uh, sorry, um, no, I take it back. If we get a one, if we get a one, we're going to go to S. Uh, we're going to go to S three because uh, now we're going to output a one because that was the target zero zero or zero zero one. If we get a zero, then uh, that's too many zeros. So now we're going to go to here, output a zero, and then we're going to stay here as long as we keep getting zeros. When we get a one, we're going to go back to here, and then we're starting all over looking for two zeros. So the only place. We output a one is right here. This is the only place. Um, well, here, this node. This one is the input. Sorry. This this one is associated with this node. Remember, it's a it's a more, not a melee. Once we're in S three, what what happens? Well, if we get a zero, then we do have the first zero in the next possible zero zero one sequence. So we can go back to here on a zero but we would still output a zero, of course, here. If we get a one, then we have nothing. So if we get a one, we'd go back all the way to here. And this, this was wrong, so ignore this completely. Uh, and then we have uh, F, S4, we already have the two paths. Back here on a one, stay here on a zero. The reason we stay here, because as long as we keep getting zeros, we can never get back to this target. We can only get to the target if we have one, two, zero, sorry, one, two zeros, and then we get a one. That gives us the target. Again, this is a more. So our outputs are associated with each of those circles, each of the nodes, and not with the links. The links only involve the, 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 the inputs. All right, so how many flip-flops will be needed? Well, that's easy. We have one, two, three, four, five nodes. So we have to encode five different states. So we have five states. So, uh, so we need at least three flip-flops. We can do four with two, but five requires three, all the way up to eight possible uh, states. But we're going to have a bunch of don't cares. Um, it takes five nodes since you must have a node that means more than exactly two zeros. So that's this node. Um, and that is true. Okay. So does that make sense, hopefully? Um, all right. So that's good, and then um, then let's see. Let's do one more. Let's do this one. I think this may be similar to the one we did. Uh, probably a little different. All right. So look at this. Okay, first read it. Using the JK flip flop pictured, write in the tracing for Q in the timing diagram. Assume that the time for the output to change after the active edge of the clock or the assertion of set not is five nanoseconds. Assume set up and hold times can be ignored. Note that the flip-flop has an asynchronous set knot and you should know how to tell if it is active high or active low. Initial Q, initial Q equals zero. You should mark the active clock edges and the times when the asynchronous input is active with this. Okay, flip-flop is a rising or falling edge when circle. Well, what do you have down here? You have, you have no, you have no bubble so it is a rising edge flip-flop. What is the set not active? It is active when it is low. So here it is high, but it's not active here because it's high. 
so it is active here. So we mark the active area. Now if it didn't have a bubble, we'd mark this area. Once we've done this, we know that this rising edge clock here, 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 uh, these three here, here, and here have no influence whatsoever. But because here there is no, the set knot is deasserted, it's inactive, so we want to mark, we want to mark these edges so we know that those, that those, those edges are going to have an effect. All right, now remember we still have to, and since this is a set, we have a, we have a propagation delay of five nanoseconds after the active edge of the clock or the assertion of set. So a set's asserted at the beginning, so five nanoseconds later, we're going to go up, we're going to continue up, and nothing can happen until five nanoseconds after this first clock. What is, what is this? We have a J of one and a K of one, so what's it going to do? When they're both 1, it toggles. So since it happens to be high, we're going to go ahead and go low. Now we know we have to stay low until this point here. And what's going on here? Well, J is a 1 and K is a 0. So it's going to set. So here it's going to set. And it's going to stay up at least until here. Now here, what is it? J is a 1 and K is a 1. So it's going to toggle. So it goes back down and that's it. All right, so that's that's that one. Pretty straightforward. If you follow this procedure, put in the put in the asynchronous input, mark the active edges, mark what the J and K J and K are, or maybe you just have a D, and then and then follow it. Make sure you put in the, the propagation delay from the beginning. So here, the five nanoseconds there, the five nanoseconds here, and the five nanoseconds there. You need those little propagation delays, and also here. And if you do that, you'll get it right. Okay. Um, so let's see. Maybe we'll do, I'd like to do one more. Um, uh, let's see. I think I think I did. I, this one I did. It's very similar, actually. Yeah, it, it is. It's very similar. We did, we did this one. Okay. All right. So let me pull up one more. Um, so I'll do this. Okay, let me do this. Okay, all right. So let me let me find one more. I guess that's reasonable. We'll shrink this down, and then I'll do one more. So mm, that wasn't it, I guess. Um, let's see, let's do, let's do, let's do this one. Okay. Uh, was this the one I did? It was. Okay, let's do, let's do spring. Let's do this one. See if we have a better. Yeah, that's good. That's did that one. Yeah, okay, let's do this one. Well, I'll print this page. Current page. Okay, and we'll do that. Okay. Uh, well, it's printing. I guess I can do it. Okay. I'm going to let you read it on this. Let's scroll down here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. And this is... Yes. Okay. All right. Almost. Okay. Perfect. And uh, now we'll bring this back up and we'll... And then maybe I'll shrink this down, shrink me down, and I'll put me in over here, maybe just a little bit. Okay, now, um, yeah, and, okay, now what I want to do, uh, we'll, 
We'll go ahead and bring, so we'll bring up the drawing thing in a second here. Okay, you're to finish a state machine chart with, with the problem, with input x and output z, where z equals zero, except when the target 1101 is detected. When overlapping targets are allowed, overlapping targets are allowed. So the first one, the last, sorry, the last one can be the first one in the next 1101 sequence. That's about all the overlap you could have. Use Mealy machines. Do straight binary flip-flop assignment for each block and fill in the AB equals showed by dashed lines. Fill in the SM charts uh, connections and write the DA, DB, Z equations below. Z is assumed zero if conditional assignment is not in the path. Okay, so, all right, so let's do this. So first off, uh, I'm going to switch to the little gizmo here. And then we'll get this straightened out. And maybe I'll raise this just a hair. Okay, so same problem all right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the uh we're going to put in the flip-flop state assignment we we're supposed to do straight binary so we have s0 s1 s2 and s3 so this will be zero zero for a and b this will be zero one this will be one zero and this will be one one okay now the problem says that we're looking for we're looking for uh one one zero one and we can have overlapping targets all right so if we did the state graph first and and it's also it is a it is a we're using a mealy okay so so let's do the state graph first just for grins so we start here we have nothing so if we get a zero we're going to just stay here on a zero and we're going to output zero since z we only output z equals one if we uh get one one zero one um, and then, so on a zero, we'll stay there. On a one, we're going to go here, and we're going to output a zero. Still don't have a target. Now, in S1, if we get another one, we're going to go here, and we'll output a zero. But if we get a zero, we've got nothing, so we're going back to here, and we'll output a zero. Now here, if we get another uh, one, so this would be one, one. No, so if, if we get another one, we can stay here, but we'll still output a zero because we still have two ones, but we don't have two ones and a zero, which is what we need. And here, we'll go on a zero. And we'll output a zero, we don't have a target yet. So that's two paths from here, two here, two here. So now we just need to do two from here. And Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't pay any attention. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, that's so irritating, but I'm going to fix it. Uh, okay, so we'll do this. I'm just going to print this again. Um, current page. Right, okay. Okay. So I've made a mistake. And I don't want It's confusing. Okay, so so the man, the mistake I made here was basically the, the these are labeled zero one two three. I, normally I do zero one two three. I don't know why I did that, but that's what happened. All right, so if we get a, a zero, we're staying here, not putting a zero. If we're getting a one, we're going here, outputting a zero. Here, if we get a one, we're going here on a one, outputting a zero. If we get a zero, we're going back to here. On a zero and outputting a one. Here, oh, almost did it again. One output a zero. Here, if we get another one, we're going to stay here because now we still have two ones, but we'll output a zero. But if we get a zero, we're going here and we'll still output a zero. Here, if we get a one, that's the target. But we can go we can go up to here because we still have the first we have the first one in the new sequence and we output a one. If we get a zero, on the other hand, we don't have anything now, so we're done. And so now we have to go back to the beginning, and we'll output a zero. All right, so now that we have this, it's a little easier to do this. At least we've thought our way through it. Oh, crap. You guys can't see it. Oh, man. All right, so let's go through this again. If we start in S0, we have nothing detected. If we get a zero, we still have... We don't have the first one. Remember, we're looking for 1101 is our target. All right, 
So we get our we get our we get a zero, we stay here with nothing, we get a one, we go here. Now we've got the first one. That isn't an output one, that just that's what this node means. The outputs again, it's immediately they're associated with the link. So input, output, input, output. We're gonna have all zeros except for the one place where we have a one. Now in S1, if we get another one, we're going over to S2, where we know we have two ones. If we get a third one, we're gonna stay here and output a zero. If we go over here, we'll output a zero too. But if we get a zero, we're going to S3, we're gonna output a zero, but now in S3, we have the first three items of our target, one, one, zero. Now in S3, if we get the next one, we're gonna go back to S1 and output a one. Because we have the target, so we output a one, and since we have a one, it can count as our first one of the next sequence. If on the other hand, we get a zero, now we have one, one, zero, zero, that's nothing. So we go back to S zero and we output a zero. And that completes. The now, once we have that done, we can go do our, we don't really, we normally wouldn't do that first. I just did that basically for illustration purposes. So you could see how to do uh, a state graph. All right, so we start here. We, we'll go ahead and label these things again, zero, zero, um, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Now, here we have nothing. If we get a 1, clearly we're going to go over here to S1. If we get a 0, we're just staying here. But you have to go out and come back in. That's the way these work. Since Z is always 0, we don't even have a Z. We don't push a condition. The only place we have a Z is down here, the one place where Z is going to be 1. All right. Here we have, uh, we get an input X, it's our second one. So our second one, we're gonna go up here like this and go to S2. But if we get a zero, we still, we don't have anything. So we're going back here all the way around to S0. Now we're in S2, we have two ones. If we get another one, we're gonna stay here. We're just gonna loop back in. We still have two ones. We actually have three ones, but that doesn't matter. We have two ones, so that's what counts. And uh, now, uh, if on the other hand we get a zero, now we have the first three items, one, one, zero, okay? So we'll just go down here. And then here, if, we, if X is a zero, that means we have nothing, because we have one, one, zero, zero. So we're just gonna go back to S zero. If on the other hand we have a one, then we have the first one in the next possible sequence. We don't have two ones, but we have one one. So we can go up here, and we can go to S1. And here, Z is a one. So we put our conditional output there. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Now, how do we write the values? Well, okay, first off, Z is easy. Z is just A, B, X. It's the only place where Z is a one. The one path that goes through the conditional output box where Z is a one is ABX. It starts in S3, which is coded AB, and it only goes through it if X is a one. So that's ABX. Now, did the A, we need two paths where A is one. Here's one, and here's the other. Now, there's only one path in here, and there's only, and there's, but there's two paths in here. One from here, and one from here. So we have to put in one path, two paths, three paths are three terms for the DA. One term is gonna be A prime B X plus A B prime X plus the one down here, A B, uh, A, uh, oh no wait, there's, uh, sorry, oh this, plus this one, uh, which is uh, A B prime, uh, X prime. So these two combine to just A, B prime, and then, so it's just gonna be A, B, A prime, B, X plus A, B prime. All right, D, B. We have uh, B is a one here. There are two paths into that one. I messed myself up. Um, so one path comes from here, a prime B prime X plus uh, one path comes from A B X. No, yeah, A B X 
plus uh, we have then one path coming in down here uh, where the b is also 1, and that is a b prime x prime. All right, so that's that one. Okay, and then uh, I think I'm going to quit with that. We'll upload that video because I have another uh, conference to do. And um, so I'll talk. Uh, what I'm going to say is I'm I'm very tempted to uh, go ahead, uh, and I, I'm going to kind of give you all a choice. You can either have two and a half or three hours to do the test, but you can't back up, or you can back up, but you only have 60 minutes. I might even reduce it to 50 minutes. So you're going to be pushed either time, which means you don't have time to call around and find out what other people did. Even that's kind of frustrating, but whatever. But um, but uh, 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 whatever. All right. Well, anyway, it's it's a little bit of a dicey topic. Not that I think everybody's going to cheat. I don't think that. Uh, it's just that I I know it's also a temptation, and I'd like to minimize the temptation. Uh, all right. With that, I'm quitting, and uh, I'm going to log on to Zoom, and we'll zoom around.